Before we get to the video, I'd quickly like to announce that I've recently partnered up with BetUS, America's favorite sports book. Even though hockey season hasn't officially begun, if you guys want to bet responsibly, for future reference, I have a 125% bonus on bets. Simply use my link below or in the corner right here to get this special offer. And now, on to the video. Since the Edmonton Oilers recently made headlines after offering Jake Bertanen a PTO, I thought I'd go through and address how they've become a haven for players chasing redemption. In this video, we're going to dive into a few NHL players' particular situations and why they came to oil country in need of another chance. And with that, here is how Edmonton has become known as the team that's been giving the most second chances. Drafted 13th overall in 2009 by the Buffalo Sabres, Zach Cassian made his way to the show as we call it via the OHL. Listed at 6'3 and well over 200 pounds by his draft year, Cassian was viewed as a strong power forward that had a real bite to his game. However, even though he was received as one of the most NHL-ready players from his draft class, Cassian ended up playing in the OHL until April of 2011. Interestingly, before he even finished his rookie campaign, Cassian was treated mid season from Buffalo to Vancouver. And it was there that Cassian began to make a name for himself as one guy you didn't want to mess with. But underneath the facade of being the team's heavyweight was a guy, in simplest terms, that was struggling. Close to a few years after he arrived in BC, Cassian found himself yet again being traded, this time to Montreal. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, Cassian would never play an official game as a hab at all. In October of 2015, the forward was involved in a car accident, and even though he wasn't driving, after undergoing some tests, it was revealed that Cassian had been under the influence of alcohol and a controlled substance. Once the NHL got wind of the incident, Cassian was made to enter and complete the league's substance abuse program. Unfortunately though, once he completed the program, on the same day he finished, Montreal put Cassian on waivers. Cassian recalled later his interstate during the process. Obviously, the incident in Montreal was pretty humbling, he says. After that accident, my world came crumbling down. There's no easy way to put it. I broke down. I cried a couple times. I didn't think I was going to get back into the NHL, to be honest, he says. Cassian, while on the Kess and Juice podcast, featuring Ryan Miller and Kevin Bieksa, revealed that he had been suffering from alcoholism beginning in the earliest stages of his career. Around a couple weeks after Cassian was put on waivers, the Habs then dealt him to the Edmonton Oilers. GM Peter Shirelli decided to give Cassian a chance to come in and offer rookie Connor McDavid some protection. After playing in the AHL for a select number of games, Cassian joined the Oilers and remained with the team for several seasons thereafter. Well, without trying to talk about Kane yet again, it kind of just happened. And rightfully so, because out of all players listed here, Kane definitely arrived in oil country with the most baggage in tow. By the time Evander Kane's contract was terminated by the San Jose Sharks in January of this year, the forward had developed quite the reputation, as Kane had struggled to fit in and acclimate with not only the Sharks, but also the Winnipeg Jets and Buffalo Sabres. Seemingly, wherever Kane went, chaos and dysfunction seemed to follow him. From fights with teammates to a disregard for team rules, Kane was given the unassumed label of being the NHL's problem child for quite some time. Unfortunately though, by the time he arrived in the Bay Area for duty, it wasn't his issues with teammates and management making the headlines. Due to a very lengthy divorce and custody battle involving his ex, Anna Kane, he became the subject of media scrutiny. As various accusations that were made by Anna seemed to fuel the fire further and make Kane seem even more polarizing to the hockey world. Things began to look up for Kane though in late January substantially. After filing for bankruptcy around a year earlier, Kane was offered a lifeline that would help him get out of debt. And that lifeline just happened to be one in the form of a one-year contract valued at $2.1 million by Edmondson. Similarly to the Zach Cassian situation, Kane was looked at as 
being a player who could help protect stars such as Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl. But with Kane, the Oilers would be receiving much more offensively. After notching 30 goals with San Jose throughout the 2018-19 campaign, Kane proved that he was still able to play with star talents. And since he was an integral part in helping the Oilers advance to the Western Conference Finals, this likely helped Kane's case for an extension. Currently, Kane signed up until 2025 and has a contract valued at $49 million. What many criticized for being a poor decision at the beginning has turned out to be, so far anyways, not the worst idea in the end. And the most recent situation on this list involves forward Jake Bertanen. After being drafted 6th overall in 2014 by the Vancouver Canucks, Bertanen struggled for season upon season to meet the expectations that came with being selected within the top 10. Due to some accusations spanning back to 2017, Bertanen's life off the ice would also become a struggle. When Bertanen was 21, about to embark on the 2017-18 campaign, a girl that's remained unnamed accused him of, in PG terms, taking advantage of her. After the two met, allegedly, in a Weston Bayshore hotel room, things, according to the unnamed accuser, became a little too hot and heavy for her liking. She claimed she verbalized this to Vertanen and asked him to let up, but the request wasn't granted. And nearly five years since the supposed encounter took place in BC, Vertanen and his accuser met in court this past July. Following around a week of testimony and court proceedings, Vertanen was proved to be not guilty. Since he was put on waivers years ago by the Canucks amid the allegations coming about, Vertanen hadn't played for an NHL team, but instead took his talents over to the KHL in Russia. However, things began to look up for Vertanen regarding his NHL career here recently, decided that they would give him the chance that many teams were unwilling to offer. As GM Ken Holland and company, granted Vertanen a PTO deal, which gives him a chance to make the team for the upcoming season. Even if things don't pan out for his hockey career in Edmonton, Vertanen has to be grateful that the Oilers were willing to give him a shot at finding redemption.